In this short tutorial we're going to look at the final stage of every project which is to save the toolpath out in a format that's appropriate for your particular CNC machine tool. So just to reiterate the stages we would have gone through to get to here, we've created our design, we've created toolpaths based on the um, drawing that we made for the design. Um, I have uh, looked at those uh, toolpaths in detail using the preview uh, and simulation material and we can see here the final result is exactly as we expect um, so I've been able to iron out any small issues as we go along. I probably use the uh, machining tool summary just to check that the times are appropriate and I might be able to spot any um, errors or in fact you know been able to optimize my toolpath with terms of uh, step overs etc to minimize the uh, machining times and I'm on to the final stage now which is to save the toolpaths for my uh, particular CNC machine tool. So on the toolpaths tab then I'm going to click the save toolpaths uh, button here and that takes us to the save toolpaths form. The form is split uh, into two areas so there's the save toolpaths list here this gives me the list that I'm going to save and here is my available toolpath list of everything that I've calculated for this particular design. So to start with uh, we are going to leave uh, the, this top checkbox off and so the first thing to notice is that the toolpaths to be saved will match whatever I've selected in the list at the bottom so with the uh, visible toolpath option switched off we're just going to output our toolpaths one at a time according to the selected toolpath in the bottom of the list and that may well be for any simple job that's the way you're going to go but you might want to save, for example, uh, when you look at this list and you can roll the mouse over these things, we can see that there are some things in the list which have the same tool type. So, for example, there's a, a, a quarter inch end mill doing the pocketing area here. So let's have a look at that one. Uh, in fact, if we turn that off and just put on the pocketing area. And then if I look down the list, I can see um, that there's another uh, pocketing area with the same size tool here. So I might want to put these two toolpaths out at the same time um, because they're going to use the same tool and we can um, save them as a single toolpath. So with um, the two toolpaths visible I can now select the output all visible toolpaths to one file and it will tell me the toolpaths to be saved now. There's two of them but it's okay because they've both got a quarter inch end mill. So um, what I would do now is choose my post processor from the list. Uh, this will remember the last one that you set. So um, in general terms, uh, if you have one machine tool, you'll only ever set this post processor once. And from that point on, it will always be the correct uh, post processor for your machine tool. Uh, just to remind you, what this is doing is uh, selecting a little file which tells the software how to translate the generic representation of a toolpath used internally in the software into the specific representation representation of the toolpath required by your machine tool. So in this case I've just uh, used the G code. You can uh, press a key on the keyboard uh, and it will take you to the initial in the list. So for example if I uh, choose uh, J it takes me to the JUSI entry in the list and I can scroll down from the J. If I go back to G it takes me back up to the G code entries and I can find the G code. So I'm going to choose actually just for the purposes of the demo the ATC version of the G code. Now the ATC uh, is the naming convention we use throughout the post process to mean automatic to tool changer support. Um, so if you have automatic tool changer support make sure you look for the the ATC version of your post and similarly if you have ARC support there's usually an ARC version as well. Now with automatic tool change support we don't need to be limited um, to outputting a single toolpath according to a common tool geometry because obviously the machine will just go ahead and swap the tool as it encounters a toolpath with a different tool. Um, so what I can do is turn on all these and stack them all up now uh, using the visibility okay and it will happily uh, create uh, my toolpath list for me uh, is a single file when I go to export it. Now one thing I want to highlight which can occur very frequently if you've got if you're outputting multiple toolpaths into a single file uh, even with a tool changer support um, be aware if I click this last uh, prism text um, tool here I get an error and it, the error is telling me that the pocket top area clear and the prism carve text toolpaths both use tool number one, but the geometry for the tool is different. So hopefully that's quite explanatory. Let's have a look. Pocket top area is a clear. So if I roll over that, I can see that's a half inch end mill and it's been tagged in the database as being tool number one. So in position one on my tool changer, uh, 
And down here, the prism carve text is a 120 degree, one and a quarter inch V bit, clearly a very different tool, but also tagged as tool number one. So that's no good. I can't output those. They, I need to know where my 120 degree tool is in my uh, tool changer. So let's say it's going to be in position five. So I can simply go at this point, I can go to edit that toolpath. I can find my VBIT toolpath 128, go in here, set the tool number correctly. So I've clicked edit on the tool. OK now, calculate. OK, and then we can close that and go back to the saving now. And we can find that this tool now goes in quite happily. And in fact, I can get the entire set of tools in here. And as we roll over them, we can see that they are set so that tool number one is the quarter inch. Sorry, tool number one is the half inch. Tool number two is the quarter inch. And basically, we work our way down so that we have a an eighth in here somewhere, uh, where's the eighth? An eighth inch there, which is tool number three. So the tool numbers are all set correctly and should match my um, how the tools are loaded into my tool changer. So with those options set, <coughs> I've got a tool changing post here and I'm going to save the tool paths and it will automatically offer me the option. Uh, it's picking up the file name uh, because I'm doing multiple tool paths here. It gives me a default file name which matches the name of my uh, job that I'm working on, the Howling Wolf. TP sign, okay, uh, but you can obviously modify that for your own requirements. If we were to output a single toolpath, so for example, I just wanted to output the pocket top area clear here and save that, it will pick up the toolpath's name as the default name, uh, which is hopefully the sensible naming convention. But obviously, as you go along, you can you can rename these files to anything you like. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. You can um, there's a separate section on tiling toolpaths. Uh, if you want to look at the tutorial on tiling toolpaths, that will explain this option here. But essentially, that's allowing you, if you've um, set the tiling um, toolpath uh, dialog up, you can split a toolpath um, that's too big for the machinable area of your uh, CNC machine, or perhaps that you want to cut it on smaller pieces of material and assemble it subsequently. Um, but that's dealt with in a separate tutorial, which uh, you should go ahead and look for if you're interested in that option. Other than that, um, that's all there is to saving toolpaths.